we're going to have a, a whole much, well, in about two weeks, we're trying to get the current status for every single state up on the web. Uh, we're buying research that comes that came in on Thursday or Friday. We're going to try to absorb it. It's so hard to find out. Sort of the last point before I uh, draw a breath here. I wrote a letter right. <laughs> to the Secretary of the Interior, Sally Jewell, on June, uh, July the 12th. And I said, Dear Madam Secretary, um, I really would like to see you accumulate all the information in your head office. If you've got a region in California which is having all these petitions coming in and the folks in Florida don't know that all these listed animals affect Florida, how do you find out? We have people in Texas every single day reading the Federal Register. Well, that's nuts. I haven't heard back from her, but I honestly believe that the federal government, the agency charged with doing this, ought to accumulate and aggregate this so you have a one-stop shop. We're trying to do the one-stop shop uh, through the KeepingTexasFirst.org website. From, from the perspective of what we're doing at Conservative Voice of the People and so many other grassroots organizations, this obviously is going to be a huge help state by state. What do you suggest? We can go to the website. Are there anything, other means by which the grassroots level individuals can help this cause? I think a couple of things. One is you've got to talk to your local congressman or woman. You must. And you must be able to tell them why the act is very difficult for your area. And I mean tell Democrats and Republicans because right. this is about the economy. Number two is really start thinking about demanding better science when you get stuff that's listed which has extraordinary economic impact and you really don't believe that it, the science is sound. That's, that's really uh, that's a terrible thing to do to the American public and to scientific inquiry. But what is so interesting is that a lot of folks in Congress don't even know how bad it is. So if you're in Florida, you may not know how many you've got. You don't hear about them. You don't realize that the one that's not even come up yet is going to be the next really bad thing. Like the spotted owl was a really bad thing. Right. And the lizard would have been a really bad thing. And so you've got to be very proactive. And, um, and you know, you'll have to learn a lot of species. You have to learn to talk about them. I mean, I now say DSL, dune sage bush lizard, trippingly. It's easy. And the next one coming is the cute little spot-tailed earless lizard. I don't know how it listens. Well, we'll have no to ears. post pictures on our website. <laughs> Maybe that'll help. Yeah. <laughs> what, about, what about curiosity? Let's say you go ahead and, and the poor lizard becomes extinct. It won't become what extinct. What are the ramifications? They're everywhere. It's, they're everywhere. And isn't that the point in, yes, at the end of the day? Yes, they're everywhere. This is just some, some sort of... I don't want to say game, but we have a basically a, a fourth branch of the government that has cropped up, whether it's the EPA or, or what you're talking about right now. And in, in some cases, what's happened is the statute that governs fish and wildlife's behavior is an awful statute. Congress needs to fix that. I, fish and wildlife does not actually have any legal way to fend this stuff off. Right. They don't. Well, this is extremely informative, and it's the, the type of information that I, I don't think a lot of individuals out there are fully aware of. And I, I'm not, but the problem is if you look at every state, every state has a major problem. Right. And uh, every CFO of every state should look at this, every chief executive officer. And I really do urge, you know, every governor staff to pay attention. Is there a way that you can get up to the 30,000-foot level and find a way to get ahead of this stuff? Research, I think, is critical. One last point. Sure. Of all of the cases, there were th about 30 cases have been filed once a species was listed to overturn it. Five, about five of those cases were remanded. That's only five out of 30. Of those five, two took the species off the list. One was a little pygmy owl in South Texas. It's back on the list again. It's tough. Well, this is a battle that people have to be aware of. And yep. we really appreciate your, your coming here and spending time with us at Conservative Voice of the People to get this issue out there at the grassroots level. We really appreciate what you're doing, and we want to thank you very much for being with us today at the Western Conservative Summit in Colorado. Thank you.